All right, so today's Pop and Learn, we're going yeah. to be talking about forever storage and groups. So you're going to send connections that you have to do it, yes. So you go to connections, and then these are different people that have connected with me in forever. And so this morning I went, or last night, I went through and all those people that I was connected with, I added them to groups. So like Amy, she is a forever customer. So I put her in forever clients. Um, and then, so when you first go out, uh, let me go out to one other incognito window for the forever.com. I'm going to log in as one of my alter egos. Let's see, I didn't remember it. Okay. So this is my fake account called Susie Snaps a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I am connected with myself and my husband through Susie Snaps a lot. Here you can see I have no group. So when you create your first group, you can name it. So you can call it friends, create group. And then right here you can see there's nothing in there. I can um, add a, a thumbnail so I can choose any file in my library. I don't have any because this is my dummy account. So I'm going to upload one. Just grab something quick. Do I have any photos in here at all? Oh, yeah. My nieces. Uh, well, here. This is my friend Margaret. We'll put her in there. I'm done. And select. All right. So now that is a thumbnail so if you if you wanted to you could put a picture in there to remind you with who's in that group but later on you just click on that picture to select a different one the first time it says add a thumbnail after that you just click on it to change it and then down here it shows me all of my connections so anybody you've friended in forever will be in a list down here and then you can add them by checking a box and hit save and then you can add new members and it'll show you that same list. So later on, you can add more. All right, so let's go back. Let me make an album here in Susie Snaps a lot, okay? So I'm gonna look at, this is a sample group album. Create, or here, groups, and we'll mark it available to friends hit create. I'm just going to upload some pictures here so that you can kind of see. Sure, we'll do that. This album is in Susie Snapslot's account. And this album has the group of um, friends. Or, and then I have five photos in it. So I'm going to go back to my account here. So now I'm in Robin Foss. And if I go to, let's see, Susie Snaps a lot, I can see this one album only because I've been given access to it. So that's how you would find, so you would go to your connections and you would find that family member that's put their photos in their account, click on them, and then you would see all of the albums that they've given you access to. Or if it's a friend, same thing. Um, and then you can easily take them off. So let's go back to Susie's account. And um, nope, that's the wrong one. There it is. And we'll go to connections, groups, friends. I'm going to remove from group. So I've checked on the box for myself. I'm removing myself from her group of friends. And then we'll go to, to go back and forth. Okay, if I hit refresh, now there's nothing there because I don't have access anymore. I took myself 
out of that group that had access to that album. So my recommendation, like first steps would be, you're gonna have, like you can see out here, I have a whole bunch of private albums. I would go out here, if you're gonna see the word connections, if you had friends and family before. And I would recommend uh, changing those to private. So take your connection ones and change it to private because anybody that you're connected with in forever would have access to all of those albums. And then brainstorm what kind of groups you want. So that's what I did and made a list. You know, family groups, friend groups, business connections, those kind of things. And then go out here to connections, to groups, and start creating groups for those. So I have ambassadors I'm connected with, clients, my family members. So you can kind of think about, and not everybody that I have eventually want to put in a group am I connected with yet in forever. So I need to get connected with them in order to put them in a group. And how you do that is you would search. So like my friend Rhonda Patterson, Look at her, she has a picture on here. I can easily find her, add connection. Then she will accept my connection request. <laughs> and then she'll show up as my one of my list of connection. Um, so that's like what I need to do is to go out there and like I have my Aunt Jill, um, Collins, um, and then Jill M. Collins, McAllister, so that's her. And then I have Jan Stamis, so I need to add her. Um, there we go, so add connection. And then once they add me in, I have an album that I've scanned my aunt's poetry into, and I can make that group of sisters have access to that album. So it'll just make it easier for everybody to access it. But they need to be connected in here for me to be able to do that kind of sharing. That's a very first introduction to groups. Um, it gives you a lot of flexibility, but with flexibility also means you have to learn how to apply it. So I, my first step, I would say, is change all of your albums to private, and then think of your list of groups. Again, connections, groups, create those groups, then get connected with people and start assigning them. Any questions? Actually, I do have one. So you're talking about like the album of your aunt's poetry. Now, as long as you're connected to the different people, they see it, but they don't have to be connected, correct? Because the album is yours. They have to be um, they connected, have to, be connected to, me. to you, but not to each other. Is correct. correct. Yep. Okay. Yep. And I can see who has access to different albums, um, but they can't see who has access to that album as well. Okay. Can you see when they look at it? No. And they only have access to view of change. Correct. Um, so that question was, do they have access to view only or to change? And it's just to view. Um, if you have made them, so we'll go back to connections. So if we scroll down here. So Emily is my account manager. Now I can await and put it in my will who becomes my account manager, but I've went ahead and assigned her. So she has the ability to make changes to my account which is organizing, labeling, tagging, um, but she can't delete. And then Scott as well, he is also my account manager, and then I am his account manager, so I can make changes to his. They can't delete, yeah. So on your, there's a form you can fill out and you can put your email and password so they can log in as you, and you give them that right, then they can delete. Any questions? All righty, well, if there's, no more questions. Oh, you have another question? I have one more question. Okay. Just because I was trying to make notes as you were doing the steps. So make all albums private. Go to your connections or send requests to your connections if you need to. But you set up the groups and then you assign albums to whichever groups. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So connections to groups and then um, set your privacy in your groups and your albums mm -hmm. to groups. And then okay. you can say which groups have it. Okay. Um, and one thing I was watching a training on this, whatever your parent album, so that's your first layer. And then within that first layer, 
there, there might be nested albums. So whatever your parent album, this top level album is, so this is public. I can't go in here and make one of these private. It has this right here. I can't change it because it's... The parent album is the one that they digitized for use in 10. The right, it's the top it's level. Right. And then underneath and is, is like your individual items within the box. Yeah. Okay. So you can move them out of that one into a different one and change the privacy setting.